Dimitri, and today's topic, arm fitness. Well, welcome to my home gym. Here we are, I've got a little bit of equipment behind me. You can see my, my favorite aerobic equipment, my treadmill. And I do almost all my exercise right here in this little room. I mean, I love to play tennis and ski and go for walks with friends and all, a variety of activities. But most of my calorie burning and muscle building is right here in this little room. And the reason is it's convenient. When we can remove the excuses and the obstacles, it's so much easier to stay lean and fit. The reason I chose to teach you first and to share with you what I do with my arms is because I get asked questions all the time. I'm in kind of that phase of life where I'm warmer than I used to be when I was younger. I'm not suffering from hot flashes anymore, but I just, I, I have a high metabolism and I'm always warm. So I wear a lot of sleeveless tops, uh, even in the winter sometimes here in San Diego. And women notice I have a little bit of muscle tone and, you know, being that I'm 62, they wonder, how does she do that? And so it's really not that hard. And if you're younger, it's actually easier. Now, I don't pretend to be some muscle bodybuilder girl or to have every great exercise, but I'm just going to show you today what I do. Before I do, I want to say something about these exercises or any, any toning and uh, muscle building exercise. When you want to work a certain body part, you want to work your arms to get more toned. You want to get flatter and tighter abs. You want to work your legs and have firm legs. You need to remember a really important fact. Hear me, the fat is going for a ride. You're not going to work the fat off. You're working the muscle under the fat layer. And so how toned and tight and fit your muscles look can be sometimes hidden by a layer of fat. Now, we all have fat over our muscles, a little bit of fat, but if we have too much, we won't see those muscles. Now, that's not a reason to not work out because fit and toned muscles under that fat take up less space and so everything looks a little bit smaller. And fit and toned muscles burn more calories. And so it increases your metabolism. So on that journey to get to the leanness that is reasonable for you, don't not do these exercises because all the results won't immediately show. Do them and as that fat starts to melt, melt off, they'll start to show. But just know we're not working off the fat, we're working the muscle under the fat. Last summer, we brought Sheila Walsh to San Diego. I have a ministry here in California called Women of Purpose. And we brought Sheila Walsh in for a half-day conference. And I picked her up from the airport. We were putting her suitcases in my trunk. And she looked at me. It was so cute. She goes, I will not covet her arms. I will not covet her arms. I will not covet her arms. <laughs> I said, Sheila. And she goes, how do you get those arms? And so I realized, you know, it is just a common thing. In fact, years ago, I was teaching a, a fitness class at a women's health club, and I was asking all the ladies in my group, what's the number one thing you want to accomplish in this class? And one woman said to me, I just don't want to die with fat arms. So I get it, and I'm responding to these arm issues. Now, I'm going to show you my couple exercises and uh, give you a couple recommendations. Are you ready? The first exercise I'm going to show you is for your biceps, the front of your arms. I'm going to use 12 pound weights today, but many of you are going to want to start a little bit lower and you're just going to have to kind of play with it. Maybe go to a gym or a YMCA and use some of the small weights that they have available and just test it out because this is one of your stronger arm muscles and nevertheless you want to start where you're at and work up. Okay, let me show you how it works. As we begin the exercise, I want you to notice that my, my elbows are pretty close to my body. I'm standing nice and tall, and I'm going to practice exhaling on effort and inhaling as I end the exercise. So it looks like this. And breathing in. And exhaling. And breathing in. And what I like to do is I like to actually alternate from straight up to the front to outside because this works the muscle from some different angles and it becomes much more effective. How many am I going to do? Ideally 12 to 15. My goal is to get my muscle pretty fatigued, which means when I start to want to pull my body and use momentum, which is bad technique and I don't want to do it, when I can't get it up nice and slowly and smoothly, then the muscle's fatigued. If we take the muscle to fatigue, it breaks down the muscle fibers just ever so slightly and then as they recover, they get stronger. 
So that's exercise number one for your biceps. The second exercise is for the deltoid muscle on the outside of the arm here. Getting that muscle nice and toned can create a, a nice little kind of round cap of firmness and a little bit of definition. Now this muscle is not as strong and there's more chance of injury in terms of uh, kind of crunching your neck. So you want to be really especially intentional to drop your shoulders to stand tall and not to lift the arm too high. We don't need to go up here. We want to stop at about shoulder height or lower if your muscle is not strong enough to lift it. Now you're going to find when I open this arm, I'm going to be much, much lower because I have rotator cuff surgery on that arm about eight years ago and I'm doing great, but it tends to be a weaker spot for me, so I'm extra careful. So you're going to see me modifying. So just like before, exhaling on effort and then inhaling on the way down, I'm going to do this. Now see how much how much uh, lower I'm going here because I, I'm feeling my shoulder a little bit right now. It tends to give in, so I'm listening to my body. Now I can do them together if I want to be a little more time efficient. And just like with biceps working different angles, I can go forward and down, forward and down, and I'm working it from a little bit different angle. This muscle for me fatigues much faster, and I, as you can see, I use a lighter weight, and that's all there is to it. That's the exercise for your deltoids. The next muscle we're going to work, the triceps, the muscles right back here. I call these muscles the I've fallen and can't get up muscle. Because if you fall and you don't have a nice strong tricep muscle, you will not be able to get up and push yourself off the floor. So we need to teach this not only to ourselves to, to get rid of that little flappy wing thing that happens, but teach it to our elderly parents so that they can be strong and be able to get up. If you've ever gone skiing and fallen down and needed to get up, or if you're a snowboarder and you finish the day, especially when you're first learning and falling all the time and your back of your arms are killing you, it's because those muscles are not conditioned. So we're going to condition them today and I'm going to show you a couple different exercises to do that with weights and then one on the floor. Are you ready? The first exercise, I'm using my 12 pound weight again. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see me. And I'm going to actually bring that weight up over my head. Notice my elbows are tucked in tight. I'm holding my abs tight and bending my knees. And I'm simply going to lift, lift, lift. Again, I'm trying to keep my elbows close and lift. I know the weight's going out of the screen, but you know where it's going, right up there over my head, and slowly exhaling on the way up, inhaling on the way down. Exhale. Again, you probably want to do 10 to 15 at the most, and then take a break. And if you want, and if the muscle's not too fatigued, you can do it again. In addition to using that heavier weight and doing both triceps at once, I can grab a lighter pair of weights. I'm going to turn to the side, bend over, and I can do this. Extend, 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 extend. See what I mean? So you're just working that muscle. You can do one at a time if you want. Again, you're taking that muscle to at least a certain level of fatigue. Well, people ask me, should I do three sets of 15 or two sets of 10 or what should I do? Well, what I say is do at least one set and hopefully the muscle will get tired. And if you have time, do a second and third set. But for me, I do these exercises almost every day and sometimes I'm just kind of in a hurry. So I'll get through my bicep curls and I'll move right into my tricep extensions and I'll grab the heavier weight and I'll do it over my head and sometimes I'll just do one set but because I do it so often it maintains my fitness. You just make it work for you. Now the next exercise you don't need weights for but I have to get down on the floor and I don't even have a videographer today. I recognize that this is a pretty amateur video 
but I wanted to get this information out to you and not be all concerned about, you know, having the right studio and, you know, all that stuff. So bear with me. I need to get on the floor and I need to adjust the camera. Hi there. I'm down here. Well, it's going to look a little bit of a funny angle, but I, this will give you an idea of how this exercise works. Again, this is, this is the one I truly call a fallen and can't get up uh, exercise for those weak arms. But it works if you're traveling, you're in a hotel room, wherever you are, you can do this exercise. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay down on a floor on a flat surface. I'm gonna try to angle myself so you can see me better. I can see myself in the, in the camera to see if it looks semi-straight. I'm, I'm straighter than I look in the camera. But the bottom line is this, you're gonna lay down so notice my bottom arm, I put my hand across my waist. It's always going to be the top arm that's doing the work. I place my top arm at my shoulder. I take a breath first just to get ready. And then I'm going to blow out on the way up. And down. And up. And down. Now, this is not as easy as it looks. So, don't expect a lot of yourself because this muscle has to be pretty strong to push yourself off the floor. You're using your body weight, but you should be able to do that. Of course, you're going to flip to the other side, remembering bottom arm across the waist, top arm's doing the work. That's my I've fallen and can't get up exercise because we're never going to say that, right? Okay, the last arm exercise I have for you, actually it's more shoulder, but shoulders, you know, they run right into the arms, as you know. This one is a press. It's gonna definitely go lighter weights for most of you. And you're just going to keep your, again, your elbows kind of into your, your body a little bit and just push up and down. And let me just sink a little so you can see up at the top and down. This is not good posture right now, but you can see it's just a really simple press. As the weights get heavier, you have to engage your core, but no matter how light the weights are, make sure you're tall and straight and push. Okay? That's my arm workout, ladies. That's about all I do on a regular basis. Pretty simple. I'm sure you can find the right weights that'll work for you right now and get pumping iron. Stay fit. See you next time.